Before we start this video, a large thank you to Tabby, Schmolk, Pekka, Mahir, a name I unfortunately cannot pronounce, but thank you very much for the support, my friend Michael, Ryan, and Joshua for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And an immense thank you to Halo Burner and Earn for their continued support to the channel this month on Patreon. It is greatly appreciated, my friends, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello guys, today we are going to add blocking to our AI. So, let's go and open the combat stand state, and we're going to a few ways to do this. I was going to do combos today, but I thought I already had done because I saw the can perform combo variable up there, but I realized it's not hooked up yet. So in the next video, we will cover AI combos. Uh, thank you to Ryu for pointing that out for me in the Discord. So make a header, label blocking, and then let's make some variables. So I'm going to have bool, will block, and we're going to initialize it false. Now you can do this multiple ways. So number one, you could basically have a blocking character that will always block during the combat stand state. Basically, if will block is set to true, we're just going to make him block. Or, option two, you could roll for a chance to block every time you enter the combat stand state. So if you want to do that, uh, basically they won't block all the time. Bonus, you could create specific states for different characters. Let's say you want some to block under different conditions, maybe like a percentage of health or whatever. So you can make more of these combat stand states and kind of just make different versions for each one if you want. But in this video, we're going to cover the role for block because that's the, the most, I guess, additive version as opposed to just blocking. So we can you can have always block if you set this to 100% basically. So let's roll for our hat. Let's put that has roll for a block chance. And then I'm going to make this a private bull because we don't need to see it. And then right below that, I'm going to make a private bull for will block during this combat rotation. So rotation is in this rotation of the combat state. Because remember, you come back to the state after every attack. So we can change this from will block to can block if you want. Because just because you can block doesn't mean you always will if you're rolling for it. Again, up to you. And then right below here, we can start writing some code here. We can say if you can block and you have not rolled for a block chance, we're going to say will block on this combat rotation is equal to First, we're going to say actually has rolled is set to true, so you don't run this more than once. And then we can say uh, will block during this combat rotation is equal to roll for outcome chance, and we pass our chance, which we don't have yet. So let's go and make a variable for that, serializable, so we can adjust it in the inspector. And we can simply call this a float type, and we can say percentage of time will block. So again, this is going to be in percent. If I say 75, for example, that means we'll block 75% of the time upon entering the combat stand state. Now we pass that number. This is future sub. Please pass the variable and not the number 75. I don't know what I was doing here and why I put this there, but I guess I was kind of asleep at the wheel. Okay, then we're going to go to if will block during this combat rotation. We're simply going to say AI character dot AI character network manager. We're going to reference is blocking. And we're going to set that dot value to whatever, or sorry, true. Because if we will block in this combat rotation, this is set to true. Now, you can see here on a roll for outcome chance, we're just passing in the number, and obviously if the random percentage is less than the outcome chance, the outcome will be performed. So basically, you throw in a 75, there's a 75% chance that you are going to block. Now I'm going to go to my night prefab, and I'm going to quickly, just off camera also, but I'll show you where I'm going to go. I'm going to go to my blend tree here, and you can see here when we are blocking, it's true, we're going to the blocking blend tree. When it's false, we're going back to regular locomotion. And just to show you, when we call on is blocking change, we're setting the animator is blocking to the blocking value, which is why we're going to go to that blend tree. So just so we're clear, this is something we did in the past with the player, but it'll work the same way with our AI. Now, on on network spawn and the AI character network manager, we have to say AI character network manager dot is blocking dot on value changed plus equals, and we call AI character network manager on is blocking changed. Copy this, and then on network despawn, do the same thing, but unsubscribe from the event. Because we call this in the player, but we never call this in the AI yet. Maybe you did, but I have not yet in the series. So we need to do that so it will pass the animator value and sync up to a new blend tree. Tick can block. I'm going to put the percentage up to 100 right now in this video, just so I will do it every time. And I want to see it actually working. I'm going to go to my blend tree, like I said, quickly, just off video. I'm going to swap all these out from straight sword to shield, because I got my guy going. He's going to use the shield here. Uh, so I'm going to go straight sword, and I'm going to use the shield off guard. And I'm just going to start putting these in real fast. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. These are all in. Uh, forgot the idle animation. Look at that real fast as well. There we go. So now if I go into the game here, um, we're just going to make the screen a little bit bigger and go over to this gentleman. And he's going to see us. And he's going to go to combat stance and boom, his shield's up. But if I hit him, you can see if I hit him right there, boom, I'm still doing full damage. So if I just move and hit him again, hang on, I'll show you in the debug log in a sec. I believe we're still printing it there. So yeah, it says the hit was blocked. And it says original physical damage 118. 
Final physical damage is still 118. Why is that? Well, if we go to the Knight Dummy, I can't remember if this is on the Network Manager. No, I think it's on the Stats Manager. I'm thinking of Nephilim. Yeah, so there's an absorption rating here. Let's go to the Player Network Manager. If we go down to On His Blocking Change, you can see when we enter blocking as a player, we're updating our physical absorption on our Stats Manager. But we don't do that with the AI because, you know, they're not changing our weapon every time they block. They're not... Typically, they're not changing weapons, so this is going to be static. So what we can do is just enter it in here on the Character Stats Manager. Just fill this in wherever you want. If you have an AI that's changing his weapons, then you can do something similar to the player, where you're going to call that when he enters the block, uh, depending on the current weapon he's using. But since my AI are static, they're not changing weapons, boom, there we go. You can see minus one because it's a 99 uh, physical damage absorption. That is working now as intended. But he's also entering a guard break stance every single time. So we didn't really give him any stamina, and he's not playing any blocking sounds, because we're usually getting the blocking sounds from the weapon. Let's make an AI character sound effect manager script. Let's delete the update and start functionality as is per tradition. I'm going to make this derive from my namespace, and then I'm going to make the class derive from the character sound effect manager. So we can override play blocking sound effects, because like I said, the AI has no weapon it's switching out most of the time. Maybe yours does, but this is a very basic AI. It's not going to change. It's going to not cycle its weapons or armor. So we can just put in some blocking sound effects here. Let's make a header for blocking sound effects. Add in an array of sound effects. And then we can simply pass this array and pick a random effect from it. First off, though, let's make sure the length is above zero. So if it's not above zero, simply return. It's less than or equal to zero return. Otherwise, we're going to say uh, play sound effect. And then we're going to pass the world sound effect manager dot instance dot choose random sound effect from array. We pass the blocking sound effects array. And that's it. So now I'm going to save that. I'm going to populate my character's script with some of those sound effects. So let's go to Night Dummy. Here we go. And I'm going to go over to the Sound Effect Manager and remove it. I'm going to put on my new AI character sound effects manager real fast. And then I'm going to drag in some of those sound effects. So I'm just going to use the same ones used my player because this guy is just using a shield. So we're going to put in the same effects we used for shield. And I can't remember if I called that. Shield or metal impact? Uh, let's just see. I think it's impact, actually, metal. Yeah, there we go. So, impact metal one. I know you guys can't hear this because I'm recording uh, with the sound off, but sound effects are indeed playing as I preview them. So, I am going to also adjust my character stamina, but we shouldn't do it here because network variables don't like being changed in prefabs. So, go to the AI character spawner in the world. Let's make a new header, and we're going to put in this header stats. And we're going to make a bool for uh, manually set stats. And I'm going to set that to true by default. So if this is true, we're going to manually set the stats when this guy spawns. And then we can just quite simply put in an int for our, uh, you could say, stamina, max stamina, and max health, or just say stamina and health, whatever you want. And if you want to get real technical, obviously, you could set the strength, dexterity, faith. If you're having your AI scale from those stats, uh, you have a more intricate system, then the same logic here applies. But I'm just going to do stamina and health because this is pretty basic. And the concepts are exactly the same as you were said anything else. So before you disable your AI's character, what you want to do here is check for if manually set stats. Okay, very good. And then you say AI character, AI character network manager. And you're going to say uh, max health dot value and health dot value is equal to the health variable that you just created. So again, same thing here with your regular health. Or you could optionally too call set max health, and I believe that'll update both of them. But I've already started this way, so we're just going to continue on like this. And then I am going to do the same thing here for my stamina, like so, max stamina. And stamina is going to be equal to stamina and stamina. Okay, very good. Now let's save that. And now I'm going to just set it to a weird number like 377, and I'm going to save this and test it to make sure it works. Always test. Coming to the game here, you can see my max health is 377, and my stamina is 150. Cool, so working is intended. Now, if I hit this gentleman, boom, yes, he doesn't instantly guard break. If you're wondering why my character is not rotating towards him, it's because uh, I cleaned off these animations and lost the animation events on accident, and I didn't put in the enable can't rotate. Okay, a really unique problem you can have. So you see here at my default prefab, my endurance is 10. If I go to my player manager, you can see that when my endurance changes, we're updating our set new max stamina value. If we go to this function, you can see that right now we're going to update our stamina bar. So some viewers were saying that their stamina bar actually doesn't update and they go into the game and then basically nothing is happening when they swing, the stamina bar doesn't move. This is because if you actually have the same value as the prefab, uh, it won't actually trigger because it, as it says, it's on value changed. 
So you could set the values to zero on your prepav if you want, or you can just, to be safe, always call set new max health value, set new max stamina value, and set new max uh, focus points value if you're the owner. And this will always configure your bars whenever you load into the game and spawn your network object. Also, apologies here, again, future Seb, I can see that the frame rate is low in this clip again. I've narrowed down the problem. It appears to be the recording software I'm using. Uh, I'll be recording and the frame rate on my end is perfect, but looking back at the recording afterwards, it's uh, very terrible. So. In the next break of this video, I've actually switched to from quarter, and you'll see it will be fine again. But right now, while I'm in Visual Studio, apologies, it kind of does look like a slideshow. Now, I'm just going to go back and correct this variable that I had here in Visual Studio and pass the percentage of the time that it will block. At this point in the video, I'm realizing that I can't do that because it's a float, so I'm going to change it to an int. You could do mathf.round if you want to, but we're just going to say int. Uh, and then down here, I am going to unreset state flags. I'm going to simply make sure that I pass we have not rolled for a chance to block, so reset that to false, and I'm going to say will block during this combat rotation is equal to false, just to reset these two things. This is every time you leave the combat stand state, obviously. So let's save, go back in the game here now, new recorder by the way, you can see my frames are fine again. Uh, now I'm going to get this gentleman to look at me, and there you go, he's blocking, and I don't swing in this clip, but the stamina issue, if your stamina bar wasn't updating, and the max layout was one that's also been fixed. So a person in the Discord very kindly reminded me that I didn't have AI combos in the series and asked I do that in the next episode. I was going to do that today. I quickly glanced at the code and saw, oh, there's a variable for AI combo likelihood. I guess we have that, and the person was just mistaken. Uh, no, I'm mistaken. I plugged it in there and said we finish it in another video. Uh, so in the next video, I'm going to cover AI combos, but I have a few questions for you guys. I'm going to cover the basic combo, but if you want anything else in that video regarding combos, let me know in the comments right now. I have one idea. Basically, I'm going to make a function where, in some instances, the AI will only combo if they land the initial hit. You can enable or disable this. So we're going to make a basically a callback when we have a damage effect come through to let the AI know if they hit their player or not. Uh, and in defaultly too, we'll make the regular combo where the AI will just do a combo a percentage of the time. But if you have any other weird things or interesting things you'd like to see in regards to AI combo and when they initiate it, let me know and I can work that in before next week. As always, guys, thank you very much for joining me. And if you paid for this video and you watched it anywhere else but YouTube, uh, you have been scammed. It is free on YouTube. Uh, thank you to my patrons is because of each and every one of this series exists. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for the people who take the time to comment and like on the series. I hope you all have a lovely weekend and I will see you next week.